1234. This is the October 16th meeting of the Hadley Media Advisory Oversight Meeting. I think that's David, why don't you swing around a little bit? Because you're hard to hear on camera. If I just, right? a, you can make a wish. One, two, three, four. One, it two, is one, four. two, it's twelve thirty-four. So we begin John. the meeting with a wish. <laughs> my wife is in kindergarten. And we have exactly 26 minutes. Uh, John Allen is going to be leaving at 1, 1 uh, p.m. So uh, we're going to move quickly. We are blessed to have Town Administrator David Nixon with us today to go over some long-term planning issues and confirm a little bit of process about budgeting. So thank you, David, for coming. You're welcome. Uh, Drew could not be here today, so we're going to skip the director's report. And we'll go right to our special guest, David, to talk about um, in any order you wish, David. Well, uh, it's your agenda, I think, we're going to talk about, right? Yeah. So okay. uh, if you want to start with uh, capital planning or home for Hadley Media, whatever. All right. So I'm just going to run off of the posted agenda, the uh, debrief on October 7th, discussion with Attorney Hewick. Um, uh, now, uh, Drew, I think, sent around some additional information about FCC decisions. Injunction, oh. they filed it, or somebody filed an injunction against the FCC. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's not surprising given what we learned in our discussion. Uh, I talked to the chair of the select board, gave him a rundown of what Mr. Hewig uh, was able to uh, provide for us. It's interesting that we always have the opportunity to open up the, the, uh, the charter agreement for. Uh, renegotiation or amendment, I think that's the words that he used. So we always have that available to us at any time if we feel that we are pressured for time. That's always that's always the right way to go. Right. The other is, is that nobody apparently knows what's happening in the industry. Uh, if they know what's happening, they're not communicating. And so uh, the prudent course of action is to proceed with uh, the renewal of the next charter agreement as if nothing else has happened at this point. Right. Excuse but me one second. Just let's all make sure we're on the same page. That doesn't occur for how many years? Uh, it occurs in uh, October 24th, uh, tw uh, 2024. It's a three-year ascertainment 25. process. Yeah. Folks, we're talking about uh, the town of Hadley renewing its contract with Spectrum Chartered Television about cable television. There's been some changes in federal government rulings about how cable TV interacts with their client towns. So that's what we're talking about here. Hadley faces renewal in 2024. There's an ascertainment study, which is a, uh, a survey of the viewers in the town to see how, how everybody's doing and what the future should look like um, as part of that contract renewal form. But we don't have to do it. My point is we don't have to do anything for at least three years. It's a three-year ascertainment. No, no, the contract renewal. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, the contract renewal by master. But you started talking about the ascertainment, excuse me. Uh, uh, yes. I was only talking about the contract renewal. Contract renewal is done through the ascertainment process. The ascertainment process is required by law yeah. to begin three years we're, we're, in advance of the expiration okay. of the current contract. Okay. okay. So. I'm on, it's October 2019. I'm already beginning to work on the f fiscal year 2021 budget. So that's that's the reason why I reached out to you in the first place is that that three-year ascertainment process starts for us in FY 2021, for which we're planning right now. And how long does an ascertainment? Three years. Three years. How long does it take? Uh, you have to do a community survey. You have to do an exchange of, uh, of uh, information between charter communications and the town. There's got to be some public hearings. Uh, you can do it within the three-year process. You're not going to feel rushed, but you are going to be receiving information from charter communications. It's going to start that three-year ascertainment process. So they will initiate it, David? Uh, we should plan for it. No. They will initiate it? They will send us a letter which starts the, the countdown. Okay, and who pays for it? We pay for it. All right, so um, they send us a letter with a $100 check. Really? Uh, yeah, $100. Um, unless they've changed the law. Now, you know, this, 
it doesn't happen all that often. That, that to pay uh, to pay for what the hundred dollars? Hundred dollars pays for the select board's administrative uh, fees for uh, getting that letter in the first place. They have thirty or sixty days. I can't remember in which to. Um, agree to renew the license or not. Now, agreement only has to do with four criteria. Those four criteria are global in nature, um, you know, and very difficult for towns to say no to. So it's, it's more formality. Okay. Um, once that uh, 30 or 60 days uh, expires, then we're into the formal ascertainment process. Okay. So today, you, go ahead. today you're giving us a heads up. This is coming down the line coming and we'll be working line. together yeah. helping you with, with helping the town with that. We need to start thinking about the FY 2021 budget okay. and what that looks like. Are, are you right. getting this information from charter or your association or what? Uh, it's, uh, this is my, this will be my third time doing it. So uh, where are you getting the information from, David? Well, have prior experience. I've done this twice before, one in Deerfield with uh, Comcast okay. and one with Charter here. Uh, it's um, <coughs> laid out in Mass General Law Chapter 166A and then all the regulations associated with that. Um, and then there's training that's provided through the uh, professional organizations that um, uh, uh, you know give us information about what is the best management practice. And, okay. okay. Please copy us at anything that you feel is appropriate so we yeah. can get up to speed, so yeah. we can hit the ground running. Yeah. Thank you. All so right, should we move on from the ascertainment or anything so else? So I think probably the action item for this committee is to take a look at Previous. prior year's budgets yeah. during that ascertainment window. What was um, what was expended? What did, what did you need to expend? Okay. I know Richard did a heroic job of the ascertainment process. I think I have a so, copy from him so from a few years ago, yeah, so, okay. You want to look through those files all right. and all that. Start thinking about what you want for July 1st, 2020, which will be the beginning of that new fiscal year, 2021, uh, so that we are supporting you through town meeting votes. Okay. For Good. That. So it had happened in a orderly and planned way rather than major scramble at the very end. Okay. Thank you. Good. All right. So that's a little bit on us. I think I have a copy of the previous ascertainment. If you guys, if you have it at town hall, yeah. I may be asking you for that. All right. Should, should we move on from the ascertainment? The Department of Public Utilities should have that as well. Um, DPW? D uh, Department, Department of Public Oh, State Department. State Department. Yeah, okay. So there should be materials available at, at DPW. DPU. DPU. Website. Thank you. Okay. All right. Next. Um, so capital planning is your next agenda item. Um, so you, you received two payments, one in year one and one in year six or five, I can't remember which of the 10-year contract of $75,000 each. This is supposed to be used for capital, right? And I imagine when we're in the uh, negotiations with Charter Communication for a successor uh, contract, uh, one of the things that we'll be asking for is more capital money, uh, particularly I, given- I, I don't think this committee has decided that. Have you decided that? We'll let him talk, John. Well, okay. well, but we learned from the lawyer that, that the, the limit is 5%, and we're already getting 5%, so I'm not sure where Capital's that. outside of that. Capital is separate from that 5%. It, 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 no, anything, no, it's it within. It's within. It, initially, it's within. Mm -hmm. But it's. But you're right on the new scheme of things, it may be. Okay. Uh, hey, I'm going to encourage you to let, let David say his thoughts. I just need to it. make sure we're clear. Okay. He just said that capital is one of the things we'll need to consider when we... Okay. So... Yeah. You're going to have capital expenses all along, you know, equipment breaks, things need to be upgraded, new new processes and, and technology come available. Um, you're obviously trying to expand your service is one of the things I keep on hearing from this committee is, you know, how can you do better, cheaper, faster, more of that kind of stuff. Capital will be part of that mixture. Um, one of the things in a three-year 
budget cycle that we have to think about, or budget window that we have to think about, is if you're going to be asking for future capital dollars, there'll be uh, an accounting for the capital money that you have already, that $150,000. So we have $150,000 capital in re reserve right now? Not right now. You've spent some of that down. Well, how much do we have in reserve? Uh, I would have to check the, uh, the numbers, but you've, you've got... Uh, I'm going to ballpark it and say at least $50,000. Okay. And when is the next $75,000 check from Charter due? You, you don't have any more yet. That's it. You got your two. So we have $50,000, that's it. Something like that. You know, uh, 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 that we won't hold I understand. Yeah. <coughs> okay. So, you know, there's the operational needs that need to be supported by the capital budget. Um, that's true of any organization. Um, the other part of it is thinking strategically about your ask three years hence. Um, Charter Communications, we'd like to have another call of $150,000. I'm just making these numbers up. They'll ask for an accounting of how we spent the last 150, and if we haven't spent it, there's not a whole lot of justification for giving us more capital money. So we should think strategically about spending that money down so that we can make a, a request. A deed, a deed request. Yeah, right. basically. Yeah. That okay. we're not just well, that assumes they're going to renew and uh, at the same rate. If we spin it down to zero or, or thereabouts, that leaves us with no maneuvering suits. room whatsoever. I don't know if it assumes anything. But you're just saying think about your capital yeah, needs think, and think about don't leave a lot of cash lying around. Yeah. Think about it strategically. Yeah. Think about it in terms of what you need to do to support the operations and to expand your programming. Okay. Um, Is this a segue into where we're going to be living next and if we need uh, well, that's part hardware? Well, that's part of that. Uh, okay. okay. So now we've just gone through the groundbreaking for the library. Um, you know, I, I provided a chart in terms of these projects and how fast they're going to go. Right. Uh, the article in the paper this week had a big number for AV needs at the senior center. And yes. I, I suspect that's where we're going to end up, or I, don't, I have no idea where we're going to end up. Are we going to end up at, at the old Goodwin Library, probably? Is there talk yet on where we're going to end up? Well. There is no talk right now, and so okay. I think okay. that that's one of the things that we need to initiate, and it would be better if we were in a position of saying, these are our needs, these are the services we provide, these are the audiences that we reach, these are the connections we need to make to the bigger world, and when I say connection to the bigger world, I'm talking about the head end. Okay. okay. You're aware that we sent the project manager a list of our requirements, uh, suggested requirements in... Uh, March of uh, at 18. Which project manager? We sent it to, for both projects. Okay. This was our yeah. minimum requirements kind yeah. of list. Now, it has to be modified though because yeah. Yeah. things yeah. have changed. All right. And let me interrupt David if I may, uh, just to say you are aware, and I know Christian's aware, that the future of cable TV might very well be going quickly to streaming, to computer based, internet based, mm -hmm. uh, the watching of television. Is already happening. Mm -hmm. We feel it's I think South Hadley or someplace. So should we be thinking strategically, if you don't mind the question interrupting, uh, that our capital needs may inquire either equipment or um, capital investment in moving towards streaming capability? Yeah. So I think I think we need to be advised by somebody who knows something about okay. that whole industry and how it relates yeah, to agree. municipalities. Yeah. I got some initial feedback back that I that the town would have to think about putting together a municipal light company. I think that's not something that Hadley has what even thought of. It's Apparently, the, it's, it's the, the legal towns, platform okay. for this stuff. Yeah. Do I know? I don't know. This is information that I've received. So apparently the municipal power companies are allowed to run the uh, streaming operation or something like that. Right? Yeah, yeah, so I, I know next to nothing about all of that. Right. We don't have one. We're not going to start one, I guarantee you. Right. They're talking about pe places uh -huh. like Holyoke Mass that has the Holyoke... Uh, Light power to the... Tewksbury, Holyoke Mass, places like that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, uh, good. But, okay, thank you. 
East Hampton has one. I don't, I'm not aware that they have a municipal life plan. So, All right. so whatever the specifics are, we so may we need, we need expert yeah. advice to guide us through even exploring whether we want to get into internet service or streaming services. Um, so that's something to start thinking about and planning for. Okay. Okay. It so. seems to me that should be initiated by you or the board of selectmen, not the head of media. Well, whoever initiates it's. Well, that's yeah. my, I'm trying to determine who's going to do that. Who is going to do the initiating or do the legwork once it's Investigated at the municipal light company. Well, I'd, be looking, I'd be looking to you all to do that. For us to do yeah. that? Maybe a working committee. Yeah. Town people, having media people. Wait, is that is it like what other towns have done to have internet service for their whole town? Yeah. That kind of thing? Yeah. yeah. So. I could imagine calling up South Hadley and just saying, okay, so how did you do that um, field visit and uh, kick the tires, see what it looks like. Uh, Greenfield is doing it. I'm not aware that they have a municipal light service. So, And we have um, the name of their director up there. Mm -hmm. yeah. too. So and that's separate from the INET. That would be separate from yes. the INET. That's what links the town they'll departments. Be they'll be connected. Yes. But, uh, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is so there any thought of doing an INET? That's what we have. So it's one have. of the things that Mr. Hewitt talked about. Yes, I'm asking in Hadley. That's what he did talk about last week. But is there any, has there been any talk in Hadley about doing just that? Um, because that would. I think that you have the backbone for doing something like that. You've got the T1 that uh, goes right through town. Uh, uh, so I think that, that you've got the architecture to, to link into that. I think that we can make use of that fiber optic cable. I thought we have a mini INET. You guys don't call it an INET here that links us together? Well, we, <coughs> you know, it's at, at every drop where we broadcast from, we plug into what's called the INET. Yeah. I don't know what that means. You know, when we go to Hopkins or when we go to Town Hall, yeah, we plug into the INET. It's like a local area network, right? Or it's something. something it's, it's it's like out. Okay. In, All right. Let's not be charter and out going. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, John. Know. It's called the out. So I agree. We should be looking into this, folks. If you're watching and you don't use a computer, but you watch cable TV, the future probably is going to be television, uh, where you get your channels through the internet. So it's a good opportunity to start looking into uh, becoming a little bit internet savvy. So this means that your computer or the town will license with. NBC online, CBS online, ESPN online, and use the networks and other broadcast companies' internet channel f for their service instead of their cable TV. But they'd have to, sorry, they'd have to subscribe to yes. internet, yes. not just cable television. Correct. In order to access that's, those That's things. what I'm trying to say yeah. here, is that you'll need more than just your cable TV, you'll need an internet connection. Correct. Let me point out that Please. the police told us uh, very informatively a couple of weeks ago that they're uh, realizing and orienting their services toward this device. Because yes. as you notice when you go through the grocery store or you're <laughs> I mean, they're right. handy one. Everyone's staring at this. And that's where the police are finding people are using the data that they put up on, I think, yeah. Facebook. Cell phone use growing, so, for sure. So TV sets are one thing, but this is probably the, the, the thing that's going to be driving it after TVs. Okay. So we were talking about where's Hadley Media going to find itself at home after these building projects are done. And there's a, little chart showing the pace at which these things are supposed to be completed. I think the senior center, I'm going to knock on wood here, is maybe a month ahead of that schedule that was right. done outline. So we're thinking the senior center will be occupiable in April or May of next year, 2020. Yeah. The library, not until the fall of 2021. Mm -hmm. Right. So We're not moving into the fire substation, I hope. <laughs> I hadn't planned on it. It doesn't, hey. doesn't seem like that would be a good idea. Sugar Shack's right there. Yeah, anyway, yeah Sugar Shack is right there, but your head end is not. So. Right, right, good point. Yeah. All right, so we have a little bit of time to still think about it. We may end up staying at Goodwin Library, right? Or is that unlikely? Um, well, let's, let's think about Goodwin Memorial Library. It needs, to, it needs a bunch of work. It needs an electrical system, needs to be upgraded. Yeah. The ceiling is uh, in need of some sort of uh, support. 
Um, it's not ADA accessible right. in the slightest, um, but uh, particularly having to do with bathrooms. So there's going to be a tolerable amount of work that's going to happen okay. in that building. Right. Please keep us posted if there is discussion on that. Yeah. Sorry about that. Did you help there? Did you say tolerable or intolerable? It's tolerable. It's it's tolerable. tolerable. Yeah. You said it needs an upgrade to electric. It needs to be ADA compliant, and I missed the third thing. The ceiling. The ceiling up between the upper floor and the uh, main floor. Uh, guys, I actually need to take this because I cannot call them back. The, um, Please continue. This one's a good place. Hello? Good one's a good place. For so many reasons. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Especially if we could, yeah. uh, you know, eventually after the construction was done, maybe move mm -hmm. at least some part of the operation downstairs so we could, okay. uh, yeah. be accessible yeah. to people. So those capital upgrades are already in the capital plan, the ten-year capital plan. Mm -hmm. So they're identified. There's a price associated. The with The capital them. needs for handicapped yeah, accessible bathrooms. Yeah, and elevator. electrical. Not, a, not elevator. Not elevator. Okay, electrical, bathrooms, yeah. uh, okay. ceiling. Ceiling. Okay. Uh, yeah. And it's in the plan for which coming which year? It's in the ten-year capital plan, so it could be as early as this uh, annual time meeting. What, what were, what's your guess right, for I'll planning purposes? At, uh, what you yeah. I think it has everything to do with how fast these things are going to go. Because we can't, we can't do that work. Two years. We can't do that work until the library has been vacated. Right. right. So if there's some sort of delay, again, knock on wood, that that doesn't happen. Um, if there's some delay with the library building project, then uh, that would affect our, the, our ability to get in there and do the electrical, plumbing, ceiling, structural. That kind of stuff. Are you aware that the library and the senior center um, are going to incorporate drops? We had asked for that. And yeah, and that was one of the things that Mr. Hewitt uh, talked about. Well, we, 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 we anticipated that several years ago. Yeah. And do you know if it's being done? Uh, I'd have to look into that. Do you know, John? No. No. Steve. You mean drop, ch charter? Hey. Charter. Yeah. Just yeah. So that would be charter, which you just call me the same charter. I mean, uh, well, under the old scheme, yes. Right. Uh, but I'm only, the question I'm asking David is: Is it incorporated in their plans? Because this all ties together. If it yes, would, it that's would. one thing. If no, it, it ought to be incorporated. If that's what the town wants to do. Um, so uh, I don't have the blueprints on the top of my. And so I'd have to look into it. Okay, would you look into that maybe? Well, check? you know, uh, I, th I think we need to be a little clearer about our relationship here. I think that you're an advisory committee that's reporting to me. Uh, I think that you should tell me what I should be thinking about in terms of these building projects. If there is something, if there's some sort of deficiency with the design and the construction of the senior center or library, that's going to affect your operations, I should be hearing about it. All right. So if you have this concern, um, I encourage you to get this concern out on the table and we can take a look at it. Okay. We had this concern back in March of uh, 2018. And we were told to convey it to the project manager. And I'm just asking you now if you know that that was incorporated or whether it just got spaced. Why don't you follow up on that? That's an excellent thing for you Should to we do. follow up on that or should you? You. Okay. You're the committee that's the advisory committee. Okay. Let me know what you find out. Okay. All right. So David's not here, but you're on a time tight schedule, yep. so I don't want to um, waste your time. This chart on the back here shows your revenue and expenses. All right, so the revenues are flat until the very last, and then they jump right up, and you are incurring expenses the entire time along. So 
you know, that looks, it tells me that we need to diversify your revenue stream. Um, you got a tiny amount of an interest income from your, from your reserves, but then you get that charter check at the uh, last two weeks of the fiscal year, which brings you into some sort of balance. Now this year you were off and you're in negative territory. Let me ask you a question, much. David. I have always understood that check to be paid to the town prospectively. In other words, it's at the end of this fiscal year for next year in advance. I don't believe that's the way it works. How do you believe it works? I believe that you get paid in the same fiscal year as you need that money. In arrears? Well, if you want to think about if you want to think about the monthly income, uh, you're not getting your, your payment until June. All right, your your fiscal year starts in July, goes to June, you get your payment at the last part of June. And hopefully it's enough to cover all of your expenses. This year it wasn't. It was off by a couple hundred bucks. So that tells, this year it's going to be off by $8,000. So that tells me that we need to diversify your, your income stream, which is one of the reasons why I asked you all to take a look at what these other towns are doing. What are we now talking about? Sorry, guys. Hmm. I Thank you, and I apologize. That was quite all right. I, no, no message is being sent here. This is a pre-schedule. No, pre I understand. Thank you. Are we talking about our operating budget and the timing of revenue versus expenses? Is that well, that's part of it, but I'm also saying that we should diversify your, your revenue so that you're getting something in other than I the agree. two sources that you're getting, which is about four and a half worth of interest income per year. Yeah. And Seventy-two thousand uh, dollars subscriber check. Money. Subscriber money, right? I couldn't agree more. Mm -hmm. So we're starting a sponsorship program for underwriters. Um, we think that's going to bring in small money, mm -hmm. irregular small money. Do you think it would be advisable to go in front of town meeting and try to go back to the days where the town actually supported community access television? I, I think half of Richard's salary was covered for a short period of years. Um, by town contribution. Do you think this is a real bad time to try to do that because of other pressures, or do you think it's worth a shot? Is that a fair question? Well, yeah, it's a fair question. It's something we've talked about. Is, uh, is the enterprise fund model working for you, or is it uh, in terms of sustainability of uh, both services and money, uh, or is it not? And given that you mentioned that cable industry is changing rapidly, uh, people are getting away from cable TV and more into streaming uh, video and yeah. music. And Their revenues are going down, right? Yeah, so your, your revenues have actually gone up, but... It's because they're charging more for probably. fewer subscribers, apparently. Yeah. But my question stands, David, and please, this is just, we're all grown-ups here. Mm -hmm. Is it a real bad time to approach the town to contribute to their local TV, like the, in the way they used to? Or would you, you this is just your personal opinion, not a town position, right? Do um, you think it might be a good time to ask for small money, a few thousand bucks from the town, to uh, supplement and diversify our income? Or do you think other things are just too pressing right now and it would be a bad, it would be a selfish thing to try to present to town meeting? Let's explore what is your long term sustainable structure. We can take less. So, so an enterprise fund is where you are right now. Yeah. We can put you into a, what's called a special revenue fund. Okay, so this is an inappropriate question. It's not an inappropriate we're, we're question. We're going back to our overall structure rather than uh, the, the cash issue, the pressing cash issue. So we can do with less and less, David. If, if let's say the um, re, re examination of our formula for enterprise funds, turns out that we get even less money. You know how we're complaining right now that we lost a third of our budget and it's not fair? It could be that when we re-examine it, we end up in even worse shape. It's just possible. It's unlikely, but it's possible. We'll survive. We'll just have to cut hours and cover less and offer a little bit less to the town. Uh, maybe a big deal, maybe not be a big deal. So uh, we would love to grow the station, grow everybody's hours and do more for the town. But we, that, that costs money. No one's going to work for free. So 
it sounds like I'm not asking a comfortable question that you're going back mm -hmm. to talking about the structure rather than whether it's a good time to ask the town to. Let me, let me talk a little bit about enterprise funds. Enterprise <laughs> funds are driven by uh, select board policy. Select board policy for more decades than I've been around here has been that the enterprise funds should be self-sufficient, self-sustaining. Um, there are other towns where that's not the case. Northampton is a good example where their enterprise funds are both user fee be, um, uh, supported as well as tax supported. So under the current Hadley arrangement, enterprise funds have to survive from their fees, not from additional town contribution. That's, that's what you're saying? That's what I'm saying okay. right now. Okay. Now, that's not my, for me to say. That's ultimately up for the select board to right. make that policy determination. Um, I think that I think it would be a per courageous political stand to suggest to the taxpayers that their tax dollars should support a function that they're that they're not benefiting from. That they're not benefiting from. Okay. Why would you say it that way? All right. So how many people are on sewer? About nine hundred accounts. They're out of seventeen hundred. That's all. Oh, um, interesting. Okay, so there's... Why should people who don't have cable TV contribute? Right. Because they use computer. Most people watch meetings on YouTube right now. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a computer or a TV, you'd just be contributing in the same way I contribute to the schools, even though I have no children in the schools. So most people are watching Hadley Media on the Internet right now. Some still... Uh, I think that's fair to say from what we, our little bit of research. So if you have a computer, your point is well taken. That yeah. A lot of people don't watch meetings and don't watch anything we shoot. Why should they contribute? Because they realize if they want to contribute, the reason they would contribute is because they realize it's a service to the town to have meetings and, shot. And that is a, that's a very worthwhile argument to present, um, but it is going to take place in a discussion with the select board about um, enterprise fund. about enterprise funds okay, and thank the you. policy. Thank you. All right. So before we so, go to town meeting, David, and I'm interrupting just so I understand okay. what you're saying, before we could go to town meeting and ask the town to contribute, we would have to get the select board's permission to leave the current enterprise fund structure. I think I think at the end of the day, unless something changes dramatically, I think at the end of the day, Hadley Media probably will cease being a, an enterprise fund. Right. All right. I just don't see the long-term dollars supporting it. I don't see. I agree. I don't see your your revenue stream being stable enough to support it. Um, but I don't see the industry maintaining its current activity level of activity I think, I think to do that. So I think I've said it. Molly has said it. That. Um, Hadley Media has got to move out of the enterprise fund business. How we do that is um, we think about the alternatives, taxpayer supported, right. special revenue fund, or pluses or minuses to both of those. Right. David, may I ask um, you? Are, I think for a while you were all exploring not even being part of town government. Being a 501c3 nonprofit. Yeah. That's what most towns do. Linda and I went to a conference in Pittsfield a year or so ago where we, there were maybe a dozen towns there from Western Mass or more. We were the only one left that still had the uh, community access television station as mm -hmm. part, of, uh, part of the town uh, yeah. oversight and stuff. Um, can I ask you a related, directly related question? Sure. Uh, to remain an enterprise fund, if we are going to for another year or two, and yet be allowed to accept taxpayer money, would that be a big deal? Or could the select board just at a single meeting say, we're going to allow uh, additional funds to come from the taxpayers if they so choose to the Hadley Media Enterprise Fund? Or is it much more complicated than adding an amendment to the current enterprise fund? Well, they would have to have a con well, probably me, I'd probably have to have a conversation with the Department of Revenue and just okay. make sure okay. how do you do this. Personally, I'd ask you to check so, that out if it's easy, mm -hmm. see if we'd be allowed to accept additional funds from the town. It's funny, do towns have a way where you can pick and choose as a landowner or a taxpayer? They, let's say I'd like to contribute annually as a taxpayer 
to Hadley Media. But let's say Linda doesn't have a computer, doesn't have a TV, and prefers not to. Is there any structure other than a contribution, some kind of private contribution, to a town department or a town organization uh, officially as a taxpayer? So every year I would throw in a hundred bucks towards, or whatever. Does that happen in any way? Yeah. So the, like the sewer, sewer, water, or I don't know. It's uh, different than that. You know, usually, usually it's through a friends organization. Uh, so that's the easiest. Private, privately, people, okay. People can do a, uh, a gift to, to a um, department. So the Hadley, Hadley Kids Incorporated is going to give a gift of about $100,000 to the school. Right. All right, so that is, that is something yeah. that's doable. So maybe we're going to set up a friends group eventually, guys. We'll see. You know, a way for people to contribute or businesses to contribute. Okay. Well, Dave Moskin, you could write a check, and I'm just making up these numbers, but you could write a check for a hundred bucks and say, I want this for the police department only. Yeah, well, I make contributions anyway. They're usually tax deductible because there is a friends or an association. Mm -hmm. But they're deductible from your income tax, not your Hadley property tax. No, 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 no. Yeah. property tax. Yes, yeah. yeah, so you can't Doesn't direct your right. property tax. <laughs> no, you can't, right. no. Can I ask okay. a question about sure. the special revenue fund and the main differences between enterprise fund and the special revenue fund? Uh, the differences are subtle, but the, the, the main thing is that the special revenue fund interest generated by any reserves uh, go to the, the, um, the, the general fund. Uh, and any surpluses at the, the end of the year go back to the general fund. So there, so there will be less money in a special revenue account. Than Use it or lose it kind of annual budget? Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, okay. Good question. All right, David, thank you very much. Sure. Uh, and uh, regarding the overhead charges, we're going to be working with you. I, uh, is there a schedule or an assignment yet for that financial group? Or um, how? I think I called that meeting. Well, I got it written down right here. I don't have to guess. I hope you'll allow us to send somebody. It's 12 noon on the 30th of October. 12 noon, October 30th, the finance working group is meeting, whatever you call it, the finance, finance team. Finance management team. Finance management team. Uh, and, we'll, and the DPW rep and a uh, Hadley Media rep are, are invited. Uh, DPW is invited. I can't remember if uh, the select board said the Hadley Media, but uh, I don't. I don't mind. Um, the public meeting or not a public meeting? Is, uh, it is an administrative meeting, so it's not posted. Okay. Uh, we're going to be focusing in on the accountant issue. Uh, that needs to be put into a stable order. Well, that's what you were mentioning. Okay. All right. If there's time left over, then we'll work on the enterprise administrative charges. Okay. Um, in the meantime, I sent out to the small town administrators of Massachusetts listserv a query about enterprise administrative charges. Thank you. Um, and got a number of feed, a number of bits of feedback um, from them. None of them particularly helpful. Um, so I sent it out to the managers of the association yesterday. And haven't received anything back yet. Uh, is that something you can share? You, uh, you're not going to filter that too much, or uh... it's all public information. Yeah. Okay, I, I'm not on that list, sir. So, all right. And uh, is there a chairman for that finance working team? Would you call? I'm, it? I'm the one that usually calls it because, again, it's administrative, so I can call it. They advise me, then I have to report in a public meeting. Ah. Uh, the results of that conversation. Okay. And this uh, select board member attends? Yes, so we have Christian Stanley and Molly Kagan as part of that. Okay. And what time, October 30th? Noon time. Noon time. I noon. In the select board room? Uh, no, it'll, uh, well, yes, in the, mid, the main meeting room. Okay. Very good. All right, David, anything else? So there'll be yeah. a member of the, there'll be anybody who has finances. So collector, assistant collector, treasurer, assistant treasurer, the assessor, um, the chair of the finance committee, chair of the select board of select Oh, so this is not a, a, work, a real working group. This yeah, is yeah, a group these, full of people. These are, these are the people who handle the money. Well, this is very disappointing. So it's not a small working group with a task assigned. It's everybody 
It's yes. not the meeting you requested. It's a it's a finance finance management team meeting. Yeah, that's what they're there for. I'm sh kind of shocked. Okay. Yeah. The assistant collector. Okay. All right. So it's not a management meeting. All right. Not what we want to hear. All right. Well, so we need, still need to get that meeting scheduled. To get what a, meeting? A meeting that the meeting that you requested. What meeting? The meeting that to to address the. Administrative chargebacks to ain't happening because ain't happening. It is happening. Oh, it is know. happening. Yeah, October thirtieth at noontime. You just told me it's the assistant collector, the collector, the treasurer, the assistant treasurer. Anybody, the anybody who's got uh, uh, financial management as part of their job description is going to be there and working on this issue. Is there some other group that you think is more appropriate? Yeah, people who are responsible for financial management, true financial management. That would be a group of probably six or five people, not a dozen. I could, um, no, yeah, I don't, we'll, I've we'll never thought of the assistant collector and the assistant treasurer as being part of the financial management team. If, Maybe if, they deserve to be, but if I If the never, collector is not available for that particular day, then uh, the assistant can be there and that person okay. can, can uh, provide perspective. It sounds like a big that. team, David. I mean, good luck. It's good to have input from everybody, of course, but... Uh, we don't want to leave anybody out. So we should uh, we should not probably expect enterprise funds to be addressed at that meeting. You have a much bigger headache, which is uh, a new accountant. Is it realistic to think that we're going to talk about? Um, Both items will be on the agenda. Okay. Okay. All so. Right. And I'll, how long I'll, I'll does that work. meeting usually last? Usually about an hour. Okay. All right. Good. All right. And I forgot the business manager from the school is going to be there as well. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. So would it be worth it for one of us to to be there? Yeah, one should show up and we'll, we'll work it out. Okay. <coughs> We'd like to carry our own water, so it's, you know the offer to set up a working group for enterprise funds was so that the enterprise funds pick up the work and do the research, so that you guys don't have to, and then you guys make a decision on the data and information we bring in, what makes sense, and it might help us get some money back, it might hurt us, I don't know. But we wanted to participate in the legwork that you started with gathering information and how it's handled, and what VOR likes to see, and that kind of stuff. So I hope we'll be able to participate as uh, information gatherers. But I, I thought your letter was addressed to the select board to, for them to actually create this working group. Yes. And they have not taken. They decided not to do that. Oh, they decided not to do that. Yeah, watch the meeting. It's at the beginning of the meeting on October 9th. Okay. No hard feelings about that. You know, we don't really need that's, an extra committee. That's what the financial management team is there for. Okay. For I thought the financial issue. management team was uh, treasurer, select board, you. Uh, you know, a group of about five or six people who are truly the management people. Not their assistants, and not the assessor, and not people who have, at least in our world, maybe it makes sense. It might make a yeah, lot of sense. The, I mean, they all call, they all are part of the same web. That's of true. That's true. Both oversight and balance, division of labor, uh, um, and um, good to have input they, from anyway. They they are there all along the way in terms of any financial yeah. transaction. Very good. Very good. I hope it all works well. I hope to be there. All right, we good? Um, <clears throat> so I always like to know, uh, end a meeting with some sort of calendar uh, and some sort of um, task assignment. Yes. All right, so um, I think that beginning to think about uh, the budget, um, probably the select board sometime in December will give their priorities to everybody. It would be extremely helpful if you had your priorities so that I can give that to the select board so that... Pur purchasing priorities for capital things? For capital, for operations, for contract renewal, all that kind right. of stuff. Right, fair enough, fair enough. All That's right. easy, yep. No problem. All right. Okay. Thank you. And so we'll work on that. Uh, I'm sorry Drew couldn't be here today. Family issues, I guess. Uh, we'll get together... A a good uh, pro forma budget for you. All right, so I have the select board making those decisions on December 4th. Okay.
And uh, you said something about how the media is clustered in with some other departments, culture or something. Yeah, that's so, a couple of years away to be a priority. So the select board have set out a, a, a funding priority schedule. So it was public safety, public works, um, education, um, cultural and recreation, uh, human services. And you're supposed to be uh, getting your priorities um, in 2024. Given what we talked about with Bill Hewig and the information that's coming out of FCC, we may not have the ability to wait that long. Right. So I'm thinking that circumstances are going to accelerate. Thank you. Good. I agree. So. And I'm excited about the streaming thing. And I'm just going to mention something for fun here, David, just in case you hear anything about this. So the, the number of people that don't use internet in Hadley, let, let's say we left cable and did uh, internet-based television, and Hadley provides the service at a very affordable rate. There's a small number of people, I would guess mainly seniors, that uh, don't use computers and do use cable TV. So they would be the outliers here, they would suffer. So the idea of getting a smart TV, in other words, a computer-ready TV for those people and internet access and maybe a, a couple hours of training so they can learn how to watch TV on their smart TV with computer hookup uh, it would be a manageable thing. Mm -hmm. It might just be five people, it might be 15, 20, but uh, I think there's a solution to people who say I don't use the internet and I do watch cable so what am I going to do? What you would do is you would get cable access and you would get a smart TV, maybe with some help from the town if you're in need. And uh, everybody can have computer and television at home. So would you just, if you hear of anybody who's, who figured out how to help the people that don't use the internet, uh, uh, who, and, and the town no longer offers cable, if that, if that did happen anywhere, what solution they found? Am I talking crazy here? No, no, you know what I'm sounds, saying? sounds yeah. like we should run down the hall and talk to council and agents. And okay, ask when them. the time comes. Ask them what their perspective on how this is going to unfold, uh, and uh, what is their uh, what resources might there be for training about how to use the internet, internet. for okay. uh, for seniors. Um, they, is it making sense? That well, but they, Charter yeah. still supplies the internet connection that we all use. Yes. So, when you're saying no longer support cable, you're it's, a, it's a separate line item on your bill. You know, mm -hmm. if you have uh, high-speed internet yeah. access, if you have landline, those yes. are all separate. But we still, we the town will still negotiate with Charter I about so. that whole. Their internet like service is great. I find it very right. So yeah. it's not about. Um, oh, it's you're talking about just Hadley Media going only to internet. Yeah, or, or, or losing the cable hookups, mm -hmm. losing 191 and 192, mm -hmm. and not paying for that anymore. But yes, keeping high speed internet. Right. So here's a question I had: If if um, on that iNet that we have, can we put a television, you know, a, a screen, in the town hall, in the library, in the senior center, and project or whatever to broadcast what's happening on 191 and 192, so that there's a public <coughs> place where people can see? We can. You, we could, and we should. I was just looking at that TV on top of the filing cabinet, and going like, yeah, I could use that at yeah. home. He's tapped it. <laughs> I think but it should it's be, I think it should be playing all the, the time. Yes, I think it should, it should be playing all the time. For one thing, just so people know, yep, oh, yeah, that's, that, that station is actually available mm -hmm. in, town, in the town hall hallway, okay. in the library, you know, not sound going, no just sound. a, you know, closed captioned, so that they know, people know that there's... And it doesn't even have to be huge. It doesn't could be, have to could be, be very little. small in the, in the library. Two little screens, one with the calendar and then one with meetings. Right, right. or I mean, big That's enough for people idea. to... We should do that. Other right. times Fun, you know, can, accompanied by a nice banner. Yes. Right. It says Hadley Media. Yeah. For right now, while we're still on those channels, we need to make sure people... A nice banner and a nice survey card. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Great idea, Linda. I think that we should do that. So I've asked for a couple of capital things, uh, one of which is uh, some sort of smart screen and the select board rooms because right yeah. now we're still using projectors and screens um, and, and if it was a smart screen that would probably do it it would, it would be smart enough to also be a TV but you wouldn't right. want that playing what's on television during meetings or no, not, during, <laughs> not during the meetings you'd want to be able to control it one way or the other but it all 
um, but it could be available for presentations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, most places where I've given presentations, I can just plug my computer into a exactly. HDMI cable yeah. and I can project. And yeah. then on there's a smart a, screen or a projector? A, no, no, it's on a television. It's on a flat screen on a flat television. Screen. Yeah. So, yeah. but then the person who's filming can cut between the speaker and the screen. That'd yep. be nice. Yeah. I could do that. That would be really nice. We have a smart screen. Because then the, then we're not just watching television and seeing the screen on the screen. We can actually see a full size mm -hmm. picture uh, of the so display. I would I I think that that would be a very useful thing to have in room two or three of town hall. The other place that I've asked for a capital upgrade is that uh, defunct uh, big screen TV in the cafeteria at Hopkins Academy. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to do uh, broadcasts from, uh, onto that screen about uh, civic engagement and the importance of... I heard that. Yeah. yeah. So now, the, from that, where would you broadcast onto that screen? From this back in... You this put a tape back, in, probably? I think they just plugged it into the... Uh, into the uh, TV5. TV5 and then use that. Got it. Okay. Like a PSA just before time meeting. So what's your thought to reactivate that? Yeah, so for a couple of reasons, one of which I think people would find it helpful to have um, something that they can look at it for making a presentation about, okay, we're going to buy a truck because this other truck is in really bad shape and here's a picture of just how bad it is. Mm -hmm. And a big hole in the head and rust and oh, all that. Not, rust for the, not for the students, but for the for meetings. Um, yeah. I thought, I, thought, I, thought, I thought about lunchtime, the kids could be watching what's going on in town or something. The other thing is, is that when you have the select board and the finance committee and, and the moderator up on the stage for an annual town meeting, you can't lower that screen, screen that's overhead. Too many people are in the way. Right. So you have no audio visual. Um, capability at all. So, if we could look into what what it might take to upgrade that that uh, that uh, existing screen yeah. or replace it with something more modern. So a six foot a big six foot like a screen about as big as that poster over there, six foot oh, diagonal, wow. about a thousand bucks for a TV, a smart TV now. So okay. not that terrible. Yeah, for a town. Yeah. yeah. I think 72 so, inch. Yeah, I think that would get a lot of a lot of interest okay. if we. Could so, uh, David, that. help us. Uh, that's the school's uh, turf, right? Yeah. Uh, Is it the school's? Is it, because if it's a, really a request to support town meeting, you know, audio visual support for town right. meeting. Right. Is it? Is it? I mean, the schools, I suppose, would use it, too. I don't think it's like we would want to ram a TV down at McKenzie's throat, so we would just need her blessing, I think, to... Yeah, we want yeah. to make sure they, they have control of the building. They don't own the building, but they have right. control of the building, so we want to play nice in the sandboxes, for I sure. I can't imagine they would oppose it, right? But would, would they? Could you think of any reason why the, no, uh, and the no. teaching community... Or no, no, but they wouldn't want to be charged for it. I oh, mean, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, right. I mean, it, they, and, and they would not own the TV, right? Right. We're going to try to raise $100,000 for the school. Um, IT anyways, this town meeting coming up, so. Well, that was a school, the newspapers, it's like about the senior center needed 100000 for AV, they may. Yeah. It was the schools? Well, the, well it's both. Yeah. Ouch. I don't know if you can fit in that corner. That's, is that too big for that place with that TV? I'm just throwing out there that <laughs> TVs are expensive, but they're not, you know, unaffordable. For I'll look at some over there. Would you? Yeah, how big it is. Yeah. Okay. The lodge, the facade lodge is probably not that big, but we just priced them. Good thought. What did you say the cost was for something that big? Uh, they just priced a 64 inch at around 700 bucks, and uh, somebody wanted a 72 inch, and I think they were a little bit more money. But, uh, you know, and it's a smart television. I mean, it could. Yeah. Okay. It's got Roku and uh, HD4 and all that stuff. Whatever. Yeah, so Good thought. Something, something that's interactive, so a slide, a set of numbers, a, right. a viewscape, whatever. So, David, you're bringing up an interesting subject. Should there be a, I don't want to call it a working committee, because that's not acceptable, but a senior center, Hadley Media, schools, town hall, select board, there's AV needs that are shared by all mm -hmm. town departments. Mm -hmm. I'll even throw in police and DPW. 
Should there be a working group to make sure that we're handling AV well for all talent departments? Maybe that's the, maybe that's the answer, and I'll give it some very serious Did you think about for that? FY2021, which again, okay. I'm working on right now. Right. Uh, the money would be a separate issue, but just how to handle the hardware and the, inter and the connections right. and the management. All right, so yeah. I'll give that very serious concern. Okay, thank you. All right, guys, we're approaching one hour. We try to keep having media meetings. David, don't get up yet. We want to thank you for coming. You're quite welcome. Thank, thank you, you for, for your attention. You we hope we have your support at budget time. i got to go meet with Christian Stanley right now. Okay. <coughs> See you tonight, I guess. See you tonight, Brad. See you. <laughs>